This is Code.org, and we are about to make an awesome project. What's an alien's favorite computer key? The space bar! It involves a bit of code, a lot of fun, and I'm going to walk you through how to do this. Let's get us uh, started. This is Code.org, and it is everyone's favorite time, mini project time! What kind of music do planets sing? I missed it. It's a joke, I think. Neptunes! <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Uh, what movements do you see in the scene? Well, shaking and traveling upwards, so the Y is changing. Which movements use random numbers? I would assume this one, right? Because it just randomly. Which movement uses the counter pattern? Well, who's ticking up slowly? The guy who went directly upwards. Cool. I can't wait to get started on our own application. All right. Plan your scene. Before you move on, take a second to plan out your scene that you'd like to make. Sketch it out. And they still have this for us. Cool. So this would be in your activity guide, which if you're my student, you already have yours. Consider the simple shapes that you've used in the past, sprites, characters. What movements do you want in your scene? Which will use random numbers? So random numbers is going to be any shaking, jumping around, hopping, right? Random size changes. Counter is if it's consistent. Forward, backward, up, down. Will variables be stored... Well, you need to store variables of information. Yeah, we're going to need to store location, at least. Is there anything you need to learn? Skills? Where can you find the information? Lots of places to find information. One of them is the toolbox, which we'll look at. Do make sure that you utilize this. Planning it out. What are we going to call our sprites? What properties? Remember properties like X and Y, width and height is critical, and it will help make this project easier. All right. So with that accomplished, let's hit finish. Okay, create your scene. First, make the background of your scene, either with shape or or sprites. Okay, so we can either create a shape or a sprite to do this. I'm going to use a sprite background command to fill the screen with color. But keep in mind, if you use a sprite, it will have to appear at the top of your code. So, now that I think of it, I'm going to look for, I don't know, some... So here's my grass, and I'm going to head towards my code. First, I'm going to get the sprite on the screen. So I'm going to go over to sprites, var, and mine's just going to be called ground. And then, because it, I'm just going to use it as the ground, I'm debating. You know what? I'm going to just do a sprite. Okay. Boop. Just kidding. I'm going to do a background. You can do a background color too. Just make sure to put it at the top of your code, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to do... Definitely this sci-fi background. Cool. All right. So if you do background, it will be mad at you because that's a reserved word. Okay, so don't. At least it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, redefine background. No, you don't want to use background. You could use wall, maybe. You could use backdrop. That works. I'm going to use backdrop. Okay. Backdrop. And now let me test it out. Run. Uh-oh. Backdrop. Oh, I don't have animation one. I only have a sci-fi background. Sci-fi. Sometimes I have to refresh my page. Let me click F5, which refreshes my page. Oh, nope. You know what's wrong. I have to draw the sprites. I've set it all up. I haven't drawn it. So let me stick that there. Boom. Okay. I actually want a weird planet type shape in here. So I need to add that as well. So I'm going to go into drawing, and I'm going to use a ellipse. And I don't want it this big, 200, 200, really big. So I'm going to say 40, 40. I'm going to place it somewhere up here. So if you look down here, that's where I'm getting my X. I'm going to say 150, 50. So 150 X, 50 Y. Oh, and the sprite's getting drawn on top of it. I want the ellipse to be over the sprite, so I need it below. What's going on? Oh, I know. I switched these up. So like I was saying, this is a good way. You can see X, Y, width, height. I can also say see examples, and that helps as well. And I'm actually just going to get rid of this 50, because if I just leave 40, it will do the width and the height automatically. Perfect. Maybe I'll do 50. And I would like that to be an orangey color, so I need to find fill. Yeah. I'm liking it, and I'm going to do no stroke, which is just no outline. Perfect. Cool. All right, that's my background. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish, and let's keep going. 
All right, create the scene with your backdrop in place. It's time to add your sprites. Do this, add or create all of your sprite animations in the tab. Create each sprite and assign it an animation. Sweet. Let me go into my animation tab. And I know there are some aliens that I'm going to use for my sci-fi background. Um, this is definitely happening. Boom. Okay, so that will be one of them, right? My background. Yeah. Okay. And then... So many choices. Oh, that one's good. Okay, there's my two aliens. But uh <laughs> Alright, now I need to set up the sprites. So I'm gonna do var sprite set animation. Now make sure you never do a var sprite a set animation above the sprite. First you have to make the variable, then you can do the rest. So um I'm gonna call this dude purple. Or alien. Uh, we'll do alien one. Alien one. Alien one. Okay. And what animation? Well, I want it to be a uh, floating alien. Now, uh-oh, why is that getting drawn on top of him? Well, it's because whatever order code runs in is what happens. So we draw the sprites here, and then we draw the ellipse on top. So it's always going to get drawn on top of this guy if that's the order we are using. Which is fine, because I'm not actually going to have him located near the circle, but keep that in mind. If you're going to draw circles on top of your sprites, and your background's a sprite, well, so you draw circles on top of it, that will also cover up the other sprites. Thankfully, I'm going to change his size, and he's not going to be near that, so it's going to be a non-issue. To change the size, we use scale, alien dot scale. Actually, let's go get our sprites like it says and not get ahead of ourselves. So let me add in the other guy. We'll take care of that later. Set animation. And I guess he is a monster. So I'm using him as an alien, though. So I'm going to call him alien, too. I don't care. Rule breaker. Boom. All right, create each and assign its value. Set the value of any sprite properties you like to use. Draw all the sprites on the screen. Got it. Cool. Well, there we are. I have my sprites set up. Let's keep going. The next piece of your scene is to add text. Add the text to your project. Use any of the commands to change the appearance of your text. Perfect. This is going to be my favorite part. So here's where I'm at so far. I'm going to mess with the sprite size in a bit, but we get to add text now. Drawing and text. I'm going to put mine beneath draw sprites because otherwise you won't even see my text. And I can show you what I mean in a second. Um, I'm going to say a joke. So what's an alien's favorite computer key? Okay. Now I want to control the size of this because otherwise it's super small. Uh, 14 maybe for now. Keep in mind X and Y, so it's way up here. It's there, but that's not where I want it. It starts at 0x and runs from there. I'll kind of more center it, so 20x, uh, 50y maybe, and I'm going to size it at 16. Oh, 200y. And then I'm going to change its color to black. So for that, I need fill. What's an alien's favorite computer key? <laughs> I like it. Uh, I guess I'll do 22. Fine, I'll do 20. All right, and then I'm going to put the answer in another bubble, another text. So, text. And keep in mind, as long as I put it beneath this text size and fill, all of this text will be black, all of it will be size 20. As long as you tell the computer first, it will then know, oh, this needs to be black, this needs to be 20. Now, with our sun or our moon or whatever, notice it's orange right now. If I were to grab orange and put it above fill black, it's going to change its paint color to orange, but then it immediately changes it to black. So now that item would also be black. So keep in mind, putting fill in the correct spot is super important. All right, and then what's an alien's favorite key? The space bar. 
And then I'll have this kind of below the other one. 10, but I don't know. 250 maybe. Yeah, that looks good for now. I'll mess with that more as we go. Use any other commands to change the appearance of your text. I think we're good on text. Yes. Yep, we are. I might make them larger as we get onward, so. Oh, wait. Cancel that. Okay. So we're going to submit what we have so far. And now, let me hit run. Yes, it's still there to edit. That worried me. All right, the final piece of your scene is to animate your scene by adding movement. Add movement to your sprite textural shapes. Include one random movement and counter pattern. All right, first we need to edit our sprite. So I have everything here stacked up. Now let's focus on getting it into the right place. So I'm going to use sprite scale and scale. Make sure you do it under the sprite, right? Because otherwise the sprite doesn't exist yet to change its scale. So I'm going to do alien. Now keep in mind one is 100%, two would be 200% as big. I'm going to do 0 0.4, which would be 40% uh, on that guy. And I don't know, 0 0.3 for this one. Let me make sure, uh, did I get this? Alien, alien two. This needs to be alien two. Let's see. There we are. And now I'm going to just move them apart. So this alien 200x, uh, 300. And maybe we'll put this guy at 100. And then X and Y, notice down here these numbers. If I hover over the screen, I can put Y at like three. Okay, so I'm gonna do like 300 and then 100. I'm kind of flip flopping them. Perfect. And I'm gonna have this text then go up here. So what's an alien's favorite color? Let's see, I'll have it start writing it, yeah, like. 50y and again if you hover over and you look here it gives you the numbers you can also hit reset and it will give it to you like that perfect now i want the text though to appear above this sun thing we made so to do that and to say it again and again computers run in order right now the computer says text size fill black and it writes the text then later on it does fill orange no outline and makes our sun so to make sure our text is over everything i need to drag it to the bottom now it's over everything. What's an alien's favorite color? Spacebar, I want it moved out to like 170x. And then we got to do movement. The spacebar, rah! <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, all right, so now movement. For movement, we need a draw loop. Keep in mind, a draw loop runs 30 times a second. So let me drag out function draw. And we're going to use the counter pattern. I'll reset. Show text. I'm just going to get some space so things are easier to read. You won't need that though. So a draw loop runs 30 times a second. What we need is basically everything but the variables and then their properties like dot scale. So I'm going to drag all of this stuff in here because now I'm going to ask the computer to draw all of this stuff 30 times a second. I don't need scale because I don't need to change the scale size. I changed the scale size once at the top. I'm not changing it 30 times a second. Let me see. And it looks like nothing's different, but it is redrawing everything 30 times a second, which is good because we're going to create some movement now. All right. First, I'm going to do the random number, uh, the random movement. And for that random movement, I'm going to make this dude go back and forth. He's going to be kind of hyper, right? Or I could even change up his size. Hmm. Nope. Let's do uh, back and forth. So. Let's go ahead and go sprites. I'm going to do X location. And I'm going to do it above jaw sprite. X location. Now I'm headed to math. Random. Now what is the alien's X location to start? It's 300. So I don't want it to go too crazy. So I'm going to say 295 to 305. So he's going to be real hyper, but not like flying across the screen. So this runs 30 times a second. 30 times a second, we changed. It says alien's x value is now equal to a random number between these. And it, the alien's x value will change 30 times a second. Ah, ah, I'm crazy. <laughs> cool. All right. Now, for this guy, I want him to appear. Bum, 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 right? I want him to move upwards with the uh, scene. So to do that... I'm going to go ahead and have 
his variable use the counter pattern, his property. So that would be y to move up. Okay. So I'm going to do that down here, y to move up. Could also do rotation though. Thinking. You know what? Let's do rotation. I'm going to have him rotate. Boom. So actually, and I'll put it right here above jaw sprites. So this will be alien one dot rotation and the counter pattern. So I need, I'm going to use plus. And what do I want rotation to be? Well, I want it to be equal to alien one dot rotation. So rotation is going to be equal to whatever rotation used to be equal to plus one. Right? And so every time the computer hits this in 30 times a second, it's going to say, okay, alien dot rotation has a new value. What is it? Oh, it's equal to whatever aliens rotation used to be. If we just started, that would be zero plus one. Okay. So the new value is one runs again. Well, it draws a sprite, runs everything again. Boom. Hits it again. Okay. Whatever it used to be. So that's one. We just said plus one. Okay. That's two draws the sprites, runs everything again. <laughs> All right, I want to use the counter pattern. We're going to be fancy on the space bar on what he's saying as well. So if we wanted to be real fancy, I could even do something with the text. So I'm going to say uh, X text is going to be equal to zero. All right. And then what I'm going to do here is put for the X value of the text X text. And then I'm going to do x text is equal to x text plus 1. Now this might be way too fast, but let's check it out. Boom. So maybe I don't want that one to move. Maybe I want to leave that one at where it was, but I could do it to this one then. And we're count using the counter pattern. To continually add one. Pretty cool. Keep in mind the organization of this matters, right? So if I draw sprites down here, watch what happens. All my texts hit in, my moon disappeared because code runs in order and it runs 30 times a second. Everything still happens. The moon's there, my text is still there. We will just never see it. It runs so fast, everything is still there, but the last thing the computer does is it draws all the sprites. So it covers it up, goes back to the top moves everything over, redraws everything, and covers them up again before we see it. And that's why you want to make sure your draw sprites, if you want stuff on top of it, if you have a sprite background, you want it to be above where that content is. And you want this content to be in your draw loop, because if you only draw it once, if you try to draw this stuff once up here, it gets covered up every time you redraw the sprite. The other thing you want to make sure is your background is the top line. Because the first variable, the first sprite that is made is will be drawn first when you ask sprites to be drawn. Let me show you. Oh, I messed something up. Let me, oh, I grabbed too many things. Boom. So now the first sprite to be drawn will be the alien. And we can't see anything because the last sprite that's drawn is the backdrop and it will cover up both the other sprites. So you got to be careful with order. Boom. I love it. Go, go, go. We're becoming pros. Compare your scene and your plan. And again, this is one last check. Talk to your neighbor. See that see that you got everything ready to turn in. Double and triple check. And be proud of yourself. You made a complicated, fun program.